Shalom. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Bahakodash, Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, whom the world ignorantly calls God, the Holy One of Israel, in the name of His begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and peace and mercy to the house of David, uh, the elect, all right, those men that are doing his work uh, across the four corners of the earth, doing it in sincerity and truth. And the one third of you men, women, and children out there that are listening, learning, and believing in all sincerity and humility. Uh, to you all, I say shalom and greetings. The Lord willing, this lesson is edifying through the spirit. Um, so I'm doing it in transit right now. Uh, I'm going to visit another uh, couple of beloved brothers. And uh, so, you know, I, I just, the spirit just hopped on me to do a lesson now. Um, but what, what was on my mind is uh, last night, and this happened a, a few times in the past couple weeks, you know, I just had a slew of, uh, of uh, I, I, I don't know what's the proper word, of foolish dreams, let's say that, foolish dreams, man, and you know, this is why, you know, there's a chapter in Sirach, I didn't even look it up, I just pressed play and, and went off the cuff, but there's a, a chapter in Sirach that says uh, dreams lifted up, lift up, up fools, you know? And so, you know, of course, a lot of men get dreams, especially worldly men, all right? They get those dreams and then they start to think certain things are real, but this is why the Lord says we, we have to be able to know and to discern whether they are of the most high, right? Because you'll get all kinds of dreams, man. You'll get some that are... Uh, dealing with maybe you and your woman all right and your, your woman might be going off and at the end of the day it might be it might be true but at the end of the day you know you you got to know your woman right in that regard you got to know what type of woman you have and if she would do some uh, type of folly like that you know but uh also you might have dreams of uh worldly thoughts you know brothers have had dreams of eating abominable foods like, uh, uh, eating abominable foods uh Getting, uh, getting shaving their beards off. You know, brothers have had all types of dreams, man. And so this is how you gotta know, you know, certain dreams lift up fools. You'll get, that, that dream will be on your mind and in your spirit telling you that something is off. And at the end of the day, you gotta know how to wake up and rebuke that demon too, because you gotta understand when you're sleeping, you're in a very, very vulnerable position, right? Because when, when you think about, uh, Right when you're awake, you're able to keep your wits about you, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Like if a demonic entity uh, presents itself to you, you know you can see. You can be like, ah, oh, that's a demon. You know, and rebuke it and keep it moving. But when you sleep, you're vulnerable, right? You can get attacks from different uh, demonic entities. You know what I'm saying? While you're sleeping, and you know, and there's also a scripture uh, in Ecclesiastes. I believe it's the sixth chapter. I could be wrong. Um, but it says, uh, dreams come in a multitude of business, you know? So some of your dreams may become, become due to certain thoughts you might be having in your head. You know, shit, I used to work at a pizza hut. I used to always dream about the damn, working at the damn pizza. They, that's how, you know, another reason this is hell. You know, our, the dreams that we have are about, uh, the positions that we're in in Babylon. You already go to a damn nine to five job. Now you got to dream about it. You be at work, can't wait to get off work. And then you go to sleep and now you got to dream about it. That's hell, man. You know, you're constantly, uh, that's uh, constant slavery because there's a curse in Deuteronomy that says, uh, it's like Deuteronomy 28 and like 62 or 63. And you know, back in slavery, you will have, you will, our people will be saying, uh, uh, what, it, what, what it were morning. Or what it were evening may, may sound like I wish it was the morning time or I can't wait until the morning time because then uh you know right now we going through hell so you like oh well tomorrow you know because the scriptures say joy is coming in the joy comes in the morning right but during that especially during that time you know our people were getting uh you go to bed they'll come and fuck you up in the middle of the night you'll uh wake up in the morning they'll come you hey get up wake up early go out and pick that cotton you know, the same way as it goes now, you know, like, oh, I can't wait to get home and go to sleep. But then you go to sleep and you be like, damn, well, I, I, now I, I can't even go to sleep. I got to stay up because you thinking about things that you don't want to think about. You dreaming about things that you don't want to dream about. Right. 
But at the end of the day, we know that we got a protection of Yahweh by Shemuel Rashad. So as a hopeful uh, man of the Lord, you know, and it just goes for you women too, you know, as a hopeful elect member, you got to realize what dreams come from. I mean, ultimately, we know that everything comes from Yahweh by Shemuel Rashad. But you got to understand the ones that are righteous, those dreams that are righteous, those dreams that the Lord sent you, either to be a, de a declaration of uh, signs of prophecies of things to come, right? Or it can be a sign of, uh, you know, something that may be happening in your personal life that the Lord is trying to give you a warning about, you know? But you also got to understand some of them is just folly, man, you know? And I'm not going to go into too much detail about uh, the ones. I had like a, a few multitude of dreams last night. And I was just like, I was just like, damn, you know, like back to back, like you're just getting like shit that you just don't want to see, man, you know? And it, it's vexing. It's vexing, man. But that's because we in Babylon. We get in the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to be. It says, uh, what's that? Psalms 126. It said it was going to be. We were going to be like those that dream. You know, we're not going to be. Uh, you know, we're going to be. At the end of the day, this is all of a, a, a nightmare that we're going through right now. But we're gonna, when we wake up and when we wake up in the kingdom, we're going to be like, damn. Like it said, we're going to be like those that dream. We're like, damn, was, was that real? You know what I'm saying? Because this this is a nightmare, man. Babylon is a nightmare. The things that we have to see, the uh, the places that we have to go, we got to see homosexuality and transgenderism. You know, I was just, uh, you know, leaving a store and I saw this, uh, she couldn't be older than 22, 23. You know, a uh, Jake woman, looked like she probably just got off work. And, you know, smoking cigarettes, man. And that, that vexed me, you know what I'm saying? It's like, even things like that vexes us, man. You know, to see our people in such a deteriorated state, where you out here just smoking cigarettes and you like 22 years old, man. You know, like I get it, like, I, no, no, I don't get it. Let me, let me correct myself. I, I remember when we were younger, you know, a lot of our people were smoking marijuana from a youthful age. But when you see a uh, so-called black, Hispanic, or Native American smoking a cigarette, man, you really got to reevaluate like what's going on. But that's because our people want to, they want to flee this nightmare too. But the difference is they refuse to return to the Lord. So the Lord is going to, he says, he going to uh, bring their delusions and their fears upon them. You know, your ass might get put to death by some, a room full of cigarettes you know, smoking somebody burning your fucking eyes with cigarettes, man. You never know, man. And so that's why we ask and pray the Lord to have mercy on us. Because this is a nightmare, man. So we in the kingdom, we 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 gonna be having pleasant dreams, man. You're not gonna wake up having night sweats, you know. We gonna be we gonna be smiling in our sleep. You, you know, people, uh, your wives gonna walk in on you. You gonna be smiling in your sleep. She gonna be like, I wonder what he dreaming about. You know, we gonna be thinking about the glory of the kingdom, the glory of Yahweh Shemuel Shine. We're gonna be thinking about the uh, the palace that we're about to build tomorrow, the chariot that a brother said he was gonna give you. You're gonna be thinking about uh you know making love to your wives you know what i'm saying it's gonna be pleasant excuse me that's why it says in uh the book of psalms uh psalm 16 and 11 that the pleasures of uh, the right hand of the lord are forevermore man you know so we're not gonna be in the kingdom having these damn foolish dreams man because it, it can it can get to you it can get the best of you but the thing is like i said you got to know the difference to discern between the two because if you let it get the best of you, it can take hold of you, all right? You can lose yourself, man. You know, I'm, I'm sure, because uh, the scriptures say uh, wine and women can make a man of understanding to fall away. So, hey, if you real into your woman, right, you real into your woman. Like, you know what I'm saying? I've, I've had times like that, you know, in past relationships where I was really into my woman. Of course, I still always put the Lord first, but I was really into my woman, right? And so... When that happens, you, if you see a dream and something that's vexing you, you can you can be like, hey man, like you know, I, you you not worried about where she going and what she doing. It's taking away your time and your focus on the Lord instead of watching a video. You you looking at your girl Facebook and trying to get in her phone and trying to do all kinds of stuff, man. You know, and I'm not trying to make this specifically about relationships. The dream could be about anything that's happening in your personal life, man. It could be applicable to your parents, applicable to your children, you know, applicable to work. You know, so you just got to understand that a lot of these dreams are full. And that's the thing. So you get you get a lot of dreams that you forget. You, 
get a lot of dreams that uh, uh, are foolish, and you have the few that you actually remember that are quality, right? Those few that you remember that are quality, even if they frightening as hell, right? We brothers have had dreams of Jacob's trouble, right? Brothers have had dreams of zombies. Brothers have had dreams of plague and pestilence. Brothers have had dreams of, uh, you know, two thirds uh, doing things to them, man. You know, that that may that the Lord may or may not permit. He may or may not allow to happen. But the thing is, at the end of the day, you don't know why that's happening. The Lord, the Lord sometimes allows people to do things to His elect just so He can judge their ass, man. Y'all got to remember that too. You know, at the end of the day, we don't want these people to put their hands on us and touch us because the scripture says, touch not mine anointed, man. So when people wrongfully do you do you wrong, man, and put their hands on you and, and try to rob you or steal from you and, you know, do things like that, hey, they're going to get their payback, man. That's where your faith got to come in and you got to believe that the Lord is going to take care of you. You know, I, and I was just thinking the other day, like, all our lives, what have we had, man? You ain't really had nothing to begin with. You ain't got mass riches. All right, let's be real. Your family ain't the fucking best. You know, your, your woman give you hell. Your children disrespect you. You know, your job don't, don't, don't give you no love or compassion, no promotions or raises. You surrounded by Edomites and heathen. The two thirds piss you off. So, hey man, who else you got but the Lord, man? Who else you got but your Yahweh Shem Shai to defend you and to look after you and to keep you in times of affliction and adversity? You know, so you got to uh, have these dreams and use them to your benefit. You know, and also that's a part of building up your spiritual discernment, right? When you have those dreams, you, you start, you know, that's you're a judge even in your own thoughts, you know, because we, we of course, brothers have counsel and man, I make judgments about certain things that may be going on with the camp. But the Lord is, he said, he's, he's trying to make us into those vessels to be able to judge the judge the 12 tribes of Israel and to judge the other nations right so sometimes you you got to be a judge in your own thoughts man you got to wake up and be like you know what that dream was through you know I, it's been several many times that I woke up like that was bullshit and I literally would say those words and but this is the thing is you got to understand that that's not anger towards you how about you how shine that's just anger knowing that that was a dream was folly man and that was Satan trying to tempt you, trying to test you, trying to mess with you, you know, because you gotta, uh, this is why the Lord gave us so many, uh, uh, stories, right? Stories help you, uh, get a remembrance of who you are, you know, and uh, who we were in our past lives, you know? So, we, uh, there was one day I made a, uh, you know, I made a comment at camp, and I hope I don't forget my other point while I'm saying this, I made a comment at camp that, uh, you know, we was talking about Mike Tyson, I was like, hey, Mike Tyson be a hard ass battle. I'm like, damn, I wouldn't fight that nigga. But then I thought about the story of King David. And now I'm like, man, you know, and then fuck Mike Tyson, man. <laughs> you know, he's just another man in the flesh. He, you know, a mighty warrior to this world. But we got you, how about Shemel Shah? And that's the same thing King, King, King David said. He said, I come to you and I'm going to slay you in the name of your how about Shemel Shah, man. That's what he said. So we got to know that the Lord is on our side before all, man. Okay? And then that's how you're going to fight the uh, the wickedness of this world. Okay? And, um, so lock in. Uh, then, oh, so my point was, you got to remember the story of Job, right? What happened to Job? The Lord, uh, uh, Job, Satan, the Lord told Satan he can do whatever he wanted to Job. He just couldn't take his life. Right? So you don't think Job, Job got touched. He had boils on him. Job lost his, his, uh, his family. He lost his uh, sons and his daughters. He lost his cattle. He lost his sheep. You know, and so what? What happened? To, uh, what happened after that? You know, you 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 don't think that Job was getting tor tormented in his dreams too? Satan was all over him, man. Satan was all over him, trying to get, get him in every way he could because it said that Job was an upright man and he is true with evil, man. You know, so Job was. I mean, Satan was trying to do everything that he could to get the best of Job. And this is where you got to have faith in him because Job's name in, in the Hebrew is Iowab, right? Which means hated, okay? And because the things that he was going through, it would have seemed that he was hated 
from Yahweh by Hashem Yahusha. He would have seen he was hated by Satan himself, but the Lord gave that as a story for us so that we can grow, so that we can be better, we can be stronger, and we can know how to deal with demonic forces, man. It wasn't just to make us, uh, give us a pit, uh, pity party for thinking about, oh my God, you know, and, and, uh, that was so bad, what happened to Job? The, the, what you should be thinking about is the glory that the Lord bestowed upon him and how the Lord kept him and how the Lord didn't confound him and how the Lord preserved him and then gave him double at his, at his latter end, man. Those are the things that we need to focus on. That's the mindset that you need to be having. Not like, oh yeah, the Lord jacking me up. That's why the scriptures say, um, uh, be, be cheerful and be patient when thou fall into a low state, man. You know, when you, you wake up and those things are, and the brothers, brothers have some low days, man. You know, I don't ever want to take that away from brothers because shit, we all have them, man. I, I was thinking, pondering on that this morning. You know, uh, you know, sometimes you get down in the spirit, you get sad. You're like, man, I want, you know, you start thinking about the brothers. You start thinking like, man, I, I pray the Lord heal all the spirits and the minds of you brothers and you sisters, you few sisters that are believing out there because brothers are going through hell, man. And that's why we're sighing and crying so hard. That's why we're praying so hard that the Lord come back and get us, man. Hey, so Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, or Kakodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and mercy to the house of David the elect. Until next time, Shalom.